Today on Sledhead 24-7, Eagle River, Wisconsin, the birthplace of snowmobile racing. We travel to the snowmobile capital of the world to attend the 50th anniversary of the Amsoil World Championship Snowmobile Derby. We get a history lesson from the legends, walk through the Hall of Fame, highlight top classes of racing, and see what it takes to race an ice oval sled at the highest level of competition. We'll also check in with Amsoil for a quick tip for cold weather starting. Stay with us for this special edition episode from the Amsoil World Championship Snowmobile Derby. Sledhead 24-7 starts now. I'm your host, Misha Johnson, here with my boys, Mac and Fish. Oh my goodness, what have you guys gotten into? Last thing left, I think we gotta just see if it runs. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of Sledhead 24-7. I'm your host, Misha Johnson, along with my co-hosts, Paul Mack and Jeff Fisher. And we're here for a special edition episode of the Amsoil World Championship Snowmobile Derby in Eagle River, Wisconsin. And you guys know this one all too well. You know, Misha, that is a mecca of snowmobile racing. That is where it all began, Fish. It goes back a long time. Yeah, a long time, like 50 years a long time. Absolutely, the snowmobile industry, like Fish just said, has been backing it for 50 years. Take a look at this. As soon as two sleds were created, racing began. For half a century, snowmobile fans have been attending the Derby track in Eagle River, Wisconsin, all to experience the sights, sounds, and smells of the legendary Derby track ice oval races. Sledhead 24-7 was there firsthand to capture the story as the bravest drivers in the world compete for their place in history. It started with a couple of resort owners that had a uh, problem in the wintertime and they didn't have any business. But they seen these newfangled contraptions running around, things called a snowmobile, and they decided over a couple of drinks at the bar one night over what they could do to raise business to have a family fun event. Well, it started in, uh, in 64. It started on a lake, Dollar Lake, right near the Chanticleer, just east of here, about three miles. And uh, we had a snowmobile and a few other people had snowmobiles and my parents thought, let's get together and have a little fun. Uh, do a little ski drawing and a little obstacle course. Well, that's kind of how it got started. But a lot of people showed up more than they ever expected. And there weren't many lodging facilities around back then. So that was a, a huge impact of people that came to Eagle River and came to the Chanticleer. Then Derby 2 was bigger and bigger and then Derby 3 came here to this present location and it's been growing ever since. And then uh, the Lions Club took over in 66, and they bought this property right where we're at right now, and uh, it's been here ever since on this property. The track has changed, went from a third mile to a half mile, but um, obviously all the grounds have changed quite a bit, but this is the same racetrack, or same location for uh, the last 48 years. Most recognized snowmobile course in the world. Made up of sawdust, snow, and ice, each foot of its one half mile length, from its unique and challenging turns to its granite like straightaways, commands respect from those who would presume to be called the world's best. The community of Eagle River and all the surrounding area, I mean, they started snowmobile racing when you really look at it. To continue supporting this year in and year out is a big boost to the economy, even if, you know, there's not a heck of a lot of snowmobile riding going on. People still flood into the city uh, for Vintage Weekend, the weekend before. You know, they had almost a thousand entries for that. Record weekend there. And then here, they come out in droves. 20, 30, 40,000 people are gonna mine the hill in the VIP suites and enjoy the weekend. The local support has been phenomenal. All through the years, the volunteers and then the people that are helping now. It's a big thing for, for Eagle River. We appreciate it. If you mention the Derby, everybody knows Eagle River. And uh, the Derby and Eagle River are synonymous. We talk about it year-round. It uh, truly did put Eagle River on the map. I'll look forward to it. And people come from all over the world. Automobile racing. 
that's where I come from. But we're avid snowmobilers. And I've been coming back to Eagle River so many years, I don't even know where to start thinking about it. I tell you what, the racing was a hot then as it is now, and it just never seems to change. Uh, you know, it's just really fast racing on ice, and um, it's a lot of fun and exciting, and uh, I'm glad to still be here and watch these uh, new guys on these champ sleds uh, put the show on they do. It's snowmobile racing at its finest. I mean, it's derby at its finest. It's got the top snowcross guys in the world, but more importantly, it's got the top ice oval guys in the world. Guys like PJ Wanderscheid and Nick Van Strydunk and Gary Moyle, they're all gonna be out here. They're running for 60 grand this weekend. You know, the track's putting up uh, a bunch of money. You know, usually it's about 10 or 20 grand to win. Uh, Jimmy Johns came in this year for the 50th anniversary and said, hey, I'll want an extra 50 grand for the purse. So a uh, winner can take home up to $65,000 if they, if they're leading at the halfway point and they win the entire race. So it's, they got a lot of guys out there and it's gonna be a pretty exciting race come Sunday. Wow, and just think fish, this all started on Dollar Lake, incredible. Well, yeah, it was just grassroots racing on the lake to just the Hades of the 70s and 80s. You know, this is truly sacred ground for snowmobile racers. It is, and you know, this is arguably where the sport of snowmobile racing began. So cool. Well, all right, Sledder, stay right where you are. Sledhead 24-7 will be right back. Still ahead. Snowmobile stories live on at the International Snowmobile Hall of Fame. From vintage sleds to fast champions, the Hall of Fame preserves the roots of the sport. We'll bring you inside the world of race teams as different disciplines of snowmobile racing prepare for the biggest race of the year. The checkers fly at the derby track. The fastest racers on the planet enter turn one at 100 miles an hour as we highlight a variety of racing classes. And We'll check in with Amsoil to get the latest tips on cold weather starting. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by FXR, world-class outerwear, stud boy, traction with an attitude, by Spy Optics, and by Polaris, terrain domination. Hi, Len Groom here, coming to you from Eagle River, World Championship Snowmobile Derby. It's the 50th running, it's a very special time. A lot of pressure to have the track right. A lot of competitors here, a lot of big competition, a lot of prize money, a lot on the line. What you're seeing behind me here are, is the equipment that they're using to make sure that the track stays in excellent condition. And a couple things when you come to Eagle River that you can count on is that you can't count on the weather. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be extremely cold tomorrow night. The equipment that we use to work the track, it has to start. And there's a couple things when we're talking about equipment that has to actually happen. Number one, it has to turn over. Meaning if you can't get it to turn, it's never gonna be able to start. So what you need to do is use a high quality synthetic oil and that vehicle can turn. You hit the key, you push the start button on one of these dozers or on this John Deere behind me and the engine will begin to turn over. The second thing that needs to happen is the fuel needs to fire. And diesel fuel by itself doesn't like to start in cold temperatures. You usually need to put some type of additive in it. Amsoil offers a full line of additives to make sure that your diesel or that your equipment will start in the cold. Nothing's more important than making sure that this track is in good shape for these racers because we're on a tight schedule, things cannot stop. Amsoil offers a huge variety of product, right from the oil standpoint all the way to the fuel additive standpoint that is designed for cold weather. We actually have a product that if you aren't looking at high quality synthetics, if you don't have your fuel uh, additized for cold weather, we have a product that you can put in that will take care of it. So tomorrow, if somebody has a generator here that doesn't start because they didn't have good oil in it or they didn't take care of their fuel, we have a product that you can pour in there called Diesel Recovery that will thaw the lines, that will make that thing start in extreme cold temperatures. The Jumbotron needs to start. All of these different pieces of equipment are critical to the machine that is Eagle River. So be sure you take a look at amsoil.com, look at our cold weather products, and take a look at our high quality synthetics for cold temperature, not just diesel, but anything. 
Well, with products like Amsoil, you are sure never to be left out in the cold. That's for sure, MJ. You know, they have everything from filters to stabilizers to octane boosters, fuel treatment, anything you need for an engine, Amsoil has you covered. It's absolutely true, but right now we're going to switch gears, and Paul, we're going to have a little history lesson. We're going to go to the International Snowmobile Hall of Fame right next door to the Derby track. Take a look at this. The Hall of Fame is next door and for me what it's really about is, is seeing the old race sleds that when I was involved with high speed oval racing, some of the snowmobiles that I raced against and uh, raced with, seeing that and the craftsmanship that was back in the early 70s and 80s is just really a, a step back in time and it's just kind of a real nostalgic thing for me. The sleds are fantastic and the people that restored them, they just did like an A plus job on them so it's like the first day they came out of the assembly line, that's how they look now. These are owned by many people throughout the snowmobile industry that uh, have them, have restored them. They're, they're uh, works of love for them. We keep them here, uh, heated, air conditioned. We dust them off every week, six months a year, and we like to rotate the stock in and out as we go along. Without those people loaning them to us, we wouldn't have the museum. Some of these, uh, I see the pictures when they found them were nothing but buckets of rust, and now they've been restored beautifully. Many restored better than what they were uh, when they were first made. You, know, you walk through there and you see all the old sleds and you see all the past champions, you see the big pictures of you know the, the greatest of sports that has ever offered. It, it's pretty exciting and to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, it, just like it's the NFL down in Canton or, or Cooperstown, you know, it means you're the best of the best and, and the world took notice. That place never gets old, Paul. It is so legendary to this sport. It really is. There's so much history in there. I've been watching that since the 70s, Misha. I've watched Bender, Trap, the Deckers. It's amazing how snowmobiles have evolved over the years. It absolutely is. So much history, so much documentation behind those doors. It's just incredible. Well, all right, Sledder, stay right where you are. We have more Sledder 24-7 action coming your way. Still ahead, the world's biggest names in ice oval racing prepare as we get an inside look on what it takes to race a half mile ice oval track at 100 miles an hour. And we'll highlight the world's best oval, snow cross, and outlaw racing classes. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Sled at 24 7. I'm your host, Misha Johnson. Now, for all you die-hard sledders out there, have you ever wondered what it's like to go 100 miles per hour sideways on a snowmobile? It takes a whole lot of guts, determination, and speed. Take a look at this. exciting and uh, it's also challenging you know as you progress you want to get faster you got to be more fit so it, it takes a lot but uh, we have fun with it a lot of pressure I guess you just got to treat it like another race as soon as you grab a handful of throttle you just feel your stomach uh, come up through your body and once you get uh, once you get to a certain speed it kind of all settles down you get to that first corner everybody settles down a little bit um, you just uh, you just ride it out from there the sleds, they look like they uh, just, you know, get on and go, but they're really, they're darting all over the place and into the corners. They're rough and they're trying to get off from underneath you and you come in and you got to pitch them sideways to get them set up to go fast around the corner and it's, it's really an art to get around this place especially. It's the, the banking and everything, it just makes everything that much tougher to do and this track has definitely got its own personality and it takes a special driving set just to get around it without crashing. Um, when you come into the corner you want to lean off about as late as possible, stab the brake one time, get on the throttle and, and kind of they pretty much drift through the corner so to speak. It's a great adrenaline rush. I mean these sleds do 0 to 80 in like 3.2 seconds. 
so they're a little rocket ship some, and, and it is, it's an addictive adrenaline type thing. Those races are so intense, and they're even more intense in person. The racers, the race teams, they are dialed in. Oh, that's right, from the snow cross to the ice ovals, there's big money, big contracts, high speed, a lot of pressure on their shoulders. No doubt about it, there is a lot of pressure on these guys, but that is exactly why this sport is so much fun to watch. Well, right Sledder, stay right where you are because we have more Sledded 24-7 action coming your way. Still ahead, the checkered flag flies as the 50th anniversary of the Amsoil World Championship Snowmobile Derby begins. Teams get ready for a fast and intense weekend of racing. Will the preparation and training pay off? We'll find out. Three big days of racing. Amsoil Championship Snowcross. March 8th, 9th, and 10th at Buffalo River Race Park. The world's greatest snowcross racers battle under the lights. Friday and Saturday night, plus regional racing on Sunday. Check out the latest gear and gadgets in the Sickies Garage Racer Mall. Launching provided by Fargo Days in West Acres. Kids 6 and under, free courtesy Peterman C. Amsoil Championship Snowcross. March 8th, 9th, and 10th at Buffalo River Race Park. 15 minutes east of Fargo. Celebrating 60 years of racing. For tickets, log on to isocracing.com. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Articat, share our passion. Speedworks, straight up USA horsepower. By GoPro, be a hero. And by Skidoo. Welcome back to Sled at 24-7. I'm your host, Misha Johnson, and this is our special edition episode of the 50th anniversary in the Amsoil World Championship Snowmobile Derby. And let me tell you, these racers are ready to go racing. It all starts with Friday Night Thunder, where the best motorsport on ice puts on a show for thousands. In the Sweet 16 final, Malcolm Chartier came out with a whole shot and maintained the lead the entire race. Chartier was dialed in, and with this win, he'll advance to the final on Sunday. Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the final day of Eagle River. Mother Nature has brought us some cold temperatures. In the outlaw class, coming in the first corner, number 16, Steve Henke, pulls the whole shot, but seems to lose an edge as number 32, Tim Hibbert, takes the inside line and holds the lead for the rest of the race and wins. In the Pro Open final, number 837 Ross Martin pulled the whole shot and takes the lead while staying out front and dominating all the way to the checkers. The entire weekend comes down to this, the 50th World Championship final, 30 laps. The top 12 ice oval racers line up and we're green. Coming in the first corner, number 747, Jordan Walls, inches out ahead. But number 28, P.J. Wandershot, and number 33, Malcolm Chartier, hot in his tracks. But a wreck in corner one sets up a restart. Here we go again. In the restart, number 33, Malcolm Chartier, pulls away with a hole shot. Number 33, Malcolm Chartier, and stays out front till the halfway point. Here, mechanics get five minutes to fine tune, adjust, and fuel their sleds. And we're back to green. Number 33, Chartier, stays out front, with number 747, Jordan Walls, in second. 
In the second to last lap, Walls gets past Chartier. But Walls can't hold his line in corner two. Chartier passes Walls inside and holds on to win the 50th World Championship Derby for the first time. Just ride like you're practicing at home. So it, it was a great race. This is a dream come true. We've been chasing this, <clears throat> excuse me, for five years now. So it's uh, it's awesome. That is such an incredible race. You know, this place means so much to the world of snowmobiling. You know, it really does. It's hallowed ground, Misha. There's so many championships, obviously, are won there and lost there. There's so much technology in these snowmobiles, and it goes back into the production snowmobiles that we all ride. No, that's right. But one thing, it should be on your bucket list. All snowmobilers, it's a must to see. Standing there on the fence line, watching those sleds go by at 100 miles an hour, mm -hmm. uh, it's simply amazing. It's true, Jeff. You know, if you call yourself a diehard sledder, you owe it to yourself to get to that derby track in Eagle River, Wisconsin. It is. It's amazing. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this edition of Sledhead 24-7. I'm your host, Misha Johnson, joined with my co-hosts and tech experts, Jeff Fisher, a.k.a. The Fish, and Paul Mack. You can always visit us online at sledhead24-7.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you next time. Next week on Sledhead 24-7, we ride out west with Dan Adams as he brings our mountain riding skills to the next level. Come on, get that leg moving. Get that leg moving. The Arctic Cat High Country XF800 is one of the most versatile sleds in our fleet. We'll show you why it's one of our favorite Arctic Cats of all time. Speedworks has the new ProClimb 800s working better than ever with their new supercharger kits. See how and why Instant Boost is the way of the future. And we'll go on another destination ride to Traverse City, Michigan. Michigan's always been known for their great trail systems, not to mention feet of snow each year. We'll show you what this drive to destination has to offer. Those stories and more next week on Sledhead 24 7.